the Gilda's maximum lawyers community of legal entrepreneurs who are taking their businesses and lives to the next level. As a Guild member, you'll build relationships, be held accountable, and learn strategies specifically designed to get you unstuck and accelerate your plan for growth. Members are also granted exclusive access to masterminds hosted around the country. Our next event is coming up, and we're heading to Scottsdale, Arizona. There's something truly magical about the power of these in-person connections where real-time breakthroughs happen. Picture this. You're surrounded by like-minded law firm owners tackling your business and mindset challenges together. The energy is electric, the insights are transformative, and the results are game-changing. Investing in yourself is the best decision you'll ever make. The knowledge, strategies, and breakthroughs you'll gain are priceless assets that will supercharge your practice and propel you forward. Join the Guild and secure your ticket to Scottsdale at the best possible price by visiting maxlawevents.com. Hi, I'm Jessica Garnifitz. I am a CPA that specializes in law firm finances, and this is the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. That was a great episode. You said it right at the end of the show, and it's absolutely true. We should talk about money and numbers more. In fact, we're going to have a whole numbers mini track at Max Law Con. So I was excited to have Jessica on the show. And I was really excited about her idea that she's going to do a mastermind with her law firm owners with the topic of money being number one. It's a really cool idea. I mean, it's it, of the entire episode, I think it's like maybe the coolest thing I heard. I'd never heard of anybody else doing that when it comes to the finances. Yeah. And I, I think we need to normalize the idea of talking about money. Like think about growing up, like, don't talk about money. You don't talk about money. So like this quiet thing, this, you gotta be in silence. And I think a lot of people suffer in silence. So. I think we need to normalize it more. I'm glad that she came on and, and Jessica was able to actually talk about it and, and tell us about some important nuggets too. Like I think people that are just getting started with this are going to get a lot out of it, especially because she kind of goes over the basics, but then also we get into a little bit more detail too. That's going to be, it's going to be something for people that uh, are a little more advanced. Well, you know, the other thing that's interesting is that for, you know, lawyers, we have so, so high fact finders and follow through. We have sort of, I would say, even lawyers that are politically liberal are, are sort of personally and fiscally conservative. So to see an accountant, I mean, those guys and gals are probably even more conservative than lawyers, right? Like they're numbers people, they're probably more clinical, maybe a little bit less. I want to do good in the world and help people, not to judge or anything, but just as, so, so to see her trying to encourage people to have a growth mindset, you don't find many, I mean, most times I reach out to an accountant or a bookkeeper including the one that I use about, hey, we could promote you in Maximum Lawyer. We could get you a lot more business. A lot of them are like those lawyers that we hear from. Oh, no, I don't need more business. So, you know, I don't know many CPAs that have a growth mindset. So I really like that about it. No, I think a CPA, their uh, answer that they give to most people is no. It's just no. That's the word that they use most is just no. Like we're dealing with something with the flight club where we're trying to do something and they're no, no, no. <laughs> Even though the, the rules say you can do these things. No, no. So I, it's, it's a fear-based thing, I think. And then usually the ones that don't say no, it's just because they don't know what they're doing and they're clowns. And they're just like, <laughs> yeah. And then they're the ones that give you your books back that are just a mess. Exactly right. That's so true. So, all right. Well, hopefully if people enjoy this episode, uh, let us know if you do. Run your law firm the right way. The right way. This is the Maximum Liar Podcast. Your hosts, Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix. Let's partner up and maximize your firm. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. I'm Jim Hacking. And I'm Tyson Mutrix. What's up, Jimmy? Oh, Tyson, we're about three days away from the Mastermind in Atlanta. I'm excited about seeing everybody. Becca has arranged for us to take a tour of the new Brave Stadium, so that should be fun. And then we'll have a little shindig on Thursday night and then the Mastermind all day on Friday. I saw the list of who's coming. It's going to be pretty fun. Yeah, I I can't tell you just said that because I know we've been throwing out different ideas. I didn't know that that's what the tour was. So that is awesome. I didn't realize we're going to go do that. That's freaking phenomenal. I'm even more excited that I came in early. So oh, that's that is that you didn't know. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm hearing it in real time, just like everybody else is. So I'm very excited. That's awesome. So are we ready to get started with our guest? Let's do it. All right. So our guest today is 
Jessica Gunnifus. She's a CPA and the owner of Silver Peaks Accounting Services. Before starting her own firm in 2018, her accounting career adventures included working in a public accounting firm for a largely publicly traded company and in both local and state governments. And we will get into the rest later. Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Jessica, you know, we definitely want to dive into the good advice that you're going to have for our listeners about their finances and their balance sheet and all those things. But we often like to start by asking our guests to give us a little bit of that story, especially the story about hanging out your own shingle, deciding to open up your own firm. Can you talk a little bit about your journey? Yeah. So I really spent the early parts of my career climbing the ladder, you know, doing all the traditional things that we would do. My goal was to be in a CFO position by the time I was 30. And I think I got there at about 31. So that was pretty close. That was exciting. And after working in that atmosphere for, you know, 20 years, I just decided that I needed more flexibility and more time with my family. And so I decided to start my own firm and I had really seen there was a need within small business for folks with my level of expertise, especially on the CFO side. And, you know, it's not something that a small business can hire a $250,000 a year CFO. And so we really were able to start from the beginning in the firm offering those fractional CFO services, along with the foundational accounting but we've really been able to make a significant difference in our clients' businesses as focusing on lawyers. You know, lawyers don't go to law school to become business owners. They don't learn how to be accountants and all of those things. So we've really been able to step into that space with our clients and help them grow their firms and become more successful. So Jessica, I know that you you all specialize in accounting and, and fractional CFO stuff. So for the people that are just hearing that term fractional CFO, will you tell people what that means? Yeah. So it's really the more high level strategic planning piece of the business. And as a CPA with the finance background, everything we do has the foundation in the finances. So we help our clients develop five-year plans and, you know, really just the goals, where they want to be, the vision for their firm. And one of the things I think we see a lot as small business owners is we kind of start this maybe to be more flexible and have more freedom, but it can quickly turn into less flexibility and less freedom. You're maybe doing everything in the firm or in the business. And we really help our clients sort of sort that out of what do you want your personal life to look like and how is that going to fit into your business life? And as far as the vision and planning goes, the foundation of all of that is what do our business owners want their firm to provide for them? So how much income do you want to get out of your firm? And how is that going to allow you to live the lifestyle that you want to live? Jessica, one of the things that we are often asked in our group is, you know, if you have one piece of advice as you start your firm, what would it be? And the thing that I always tell people now is to make sure that they get their chart of accounts properly squared away. And that, you know, what happened with me, because I'm not really good with money, is that I'd get distracted. I'd go off and do one other thing. And like, there'd be one little check that was off by a little bit of an amount, or I didn't know how to categorize it. And then the next month, there might be two of those. And then the next one a month. And then by the end of the year, everything's all jacked up. Can you talk a little bit about why it's important to be correct and accurate from the beginning? Yeah, I think, and you know, as a small business, we're not a publicly traded company, so we don't have the SEC breathing down our backs if our financial statements aren't accurate. But at the end of the day, it all comes out to the tax return, right? So if we're not doing our accounting properly, it's going to affect our tax position at some point at some time. And, you know, it may be we overpay, maybe we underpay. And, you know, if you can keep up with it, keep it accurate, actually reconcile your bank. I think a lot of small business owners use QuickBooks online. It's great. It's easy, right? You go to your bank feed, you add it, the transaction, and everything's great. Well, if you're not actually reconciling the bank, sometimes not everything goes into the bank feeds. And I could probably talk for an hour about trust accounting and how important that is. And 
really with that piece, you just have to start it correctly, accurately. And I think it pays dividends if you have a professional help you get that set up. Even if you don't have a professional doing your books every month, have somebody help you get that set up, show you the processes. And if you do get audited or you have clients asking questions, you're going to know exactly what's going on. And I know that is an issue and attorneys lose sleep, frankly, at night over their trust accounts. So it's just deal with it from the beginning, invest a little bit of money and having a professional help you set everything up. All right. Well, let's talk about, let's say that you, because there's a lot of people that have been running their solo practice and they probably been doing their books for years and they want to start using a bookkeeper. Let's say that they didn't, let's say that they've screwed their books up. What's the process for fixing that once you get a bookkeeper? Yeah. Well, we, of course, take a look at everything and we talk with the owner about, you know, how far back they want us to go to correct things. And there's really sort of a risk analysis that happens there between us and the firm owner. And, you know, at some point, unless, you know, it doesn't really make sense to go back 10 years and start from the beginning. So where do you want us to start from? And then we may have some assumptions we need to make, you know, to really get the books at point A to point B. But that is work that we do frequently. And I think part of it is just, as a firm owner is saying, okay, I'm drawing the line in the sand. I understand this is an issue and I'm going to get it taken care of. What are some other big mistakes that you see, Jessica? I think the trust account is one of the bigger areas and it's sort of a situation of maybe it's being done okay, but it's not fully being done. The firm owner might know there's a few issues, but they're not really on top of it. And we also see probably more frequently than not that firm owners hire a professional of some level to do this work for them and it's not being done accurately. And the firm owner doesn't really even know the questions to ask. And when they come to me and I say, okay, here's the list of things that are wrong. Almost always I hear them say, you know, I thought something wasn't right, but I didn't really know what it was. And so one of my biggest pieces of advice to attorneys, because you are not accountants, you're not CPAs, you don't know how the debits and credits should work, and you don't need to know that. But if your gut is telling you something may not be right, or, you know, you're getting an answer that doesn't sound right, or you don't understand it, in my experience, it's almost always accurate, and it's pointing to something that isn't being done correctly. So definitely follow your gut when it comes to your accounting good advice. I want to get into financial reports and financial statements. So what are some of the key, if we were going to break this down, like as like the most simple reports that people need to have, like the most important statements, what do you think they should be? Because I, I want people that are, that are not using these to start small. So if you're going to start small, what are the basics for, for people? The very basic is the balance sheet and the profit and loss. And the balance sheet is probably the most mystical of the two to Business owners, because your profit and loss, that makes sense, right? Your revenue minus your expenses, okay. But there are a few important things on the balance sheet you need to be looking at. So even if you have a professional doing your accounting, we make mistakes. So we need you to be reviewing those, you know, on a monthly basis or whatever sort of situation you have with your um, professional to make sure from your perspective, high level 50,000 foot view, it looks correct. So if you're looking at your bank account balance and you, you know, pulled it up online and it had one number and then the financial statements have a different number, it's really good to ask those questions. So it, really on the balance sheet, it's going to be your cash balances, right? So make sure those look okay. If you're tracking your trust accounting within your regular firm books, you should have a cash balance for your account, your IOLTA account. And then under the liability section, you should have an offsetting liability for those client trust balances. And those should equal because at the end of the day, it's not your money. The purpose of that within the accounting records is to remove that asset from your books because it isn't your money. So if those two numbers don't match, which is an issue we find probably 98% of the time in the clients we've taken, there's some sort of issue within there. Now it's, an accounting record keeping issue that 
Sometimes we can figure it out fairly quickly. You know, sometimes it takes more research. So on your balance sheet, it's going to be your cash balances. Make sure they look okay and are within the realm of what you think they should be. Your trust account and the trust liability. And then within your equity section, there are situations where you can drive your equity negative and that could have potential tax consequences. And so we always ask clients or advise clients to take a look at your equity. And if you do drive that negative, it needs to be a strategic decision with your accounting professional. So that would be on the balance sheet side. On the profit and loss, I think sometimes we see clients get too focused on the revenue number or the expense number one or the other, like, you know, I'm just going to cut expenses, cut, cut, cut expenses, or, you know, I don't care what my expenses are because I'm just going to keep making more and more money. At the end of the day, the health of your firm is driven by the profit number and your profit margin. And so we are heavily focused on our profit margin. When we do all of our planning, our financial planning, we have a profit margin goal and we, everything drives that profit margin goal. Have you ever felt overwhelmed with everything there is to do within your legal practice? How do you keep up with your legal work while making time for growing your practice and attracting clients? Do important things like deadlines and even your family fall through the cracks? This is why you should join us at the number one conference for legal entrepreneurs, Max LawCon. We're going to be focused on helping practices scale and bringing calm to the order. This conference is curated in order to accelerate your implementation. Based on where you are in your legal practice, we're going to help you identify exactly what is most important right now. When you leave Max LawCon, you go home with complete clarity, focus, and a plan to make 2022 your best year ever. And not only your best year in terms of revenue, but your best year in terms of time. Time back with your family. More time to do the work that is in your zone of genius, only taking the clients that you like, and more money in your pocket. It's all at the Maximum Lawyer Conference. Max LawCon is a two-day event on Thursday, June 2nd and Friday, June 3rd in St. Charles, Missouri. Seats are filling fast. Grab yours today at www.maxlawcon2022.com. You're listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Our guest today is Jessica Gonefus. She's a CPA and a fractional CFO for lawyers. Let's talk about that issue that you just raised about the profit margin. What should law firm owners be thinking about as the right range for profit on a firm where they're paying themselves a salary? In that situation, we like to see at least 20%, 25% is much is healthier. That would be our goal. You know, depending on the situation, we have firms that are at 35% and they're still paying themselves salaries. Some uh, have hit 40. So I guess what I would say is if you're below 20, you have an issue probably. There's something out of alignment there within your firm, but really that 20, 25 or above that is really going to be driven by the way you want to run your firm. So maybe a firm owner doesn't want to work 40 hours a week. They're okay with a lower profit margin because they're not there. Maybe they don't want a large staff because they don't want to manage a bunch of people. So we really take into account the big picture of what the firm wants. There may also be times where you strategically know you're going to have a lower profit margin for a year. So if you're doing some foundational building, maybe you're doing new software implementation, um, maybe you moved into a new office building and you have some expenses there, but that in our world is very strategic. So if we're going to drop lower than our goal for a year, we know exactly why. And we have a long-term plan that that is going to serve us in, you know, the next five or 10 years, because we, we made a strategic decision of why we're doing that. So we see a lot of firms that are growing, they're eating a lot of cash and because they're, it's part of growth. What are some tools to help manage that, that cash crunch, I guess, or, or just the fact that you're just eating so much cash so quickly because you are growing so rapidly? Yeah, I think, I mean, I really like budgeting. I like KPIs. All of those things help tell us the story behind just we're bleeding cash, right? So we may be 
it's kind of just back to what I said is we are in a growth mode and we have planned for it. We've planned for the cash. We've possibly, you know, in the past made sure we were saving the cash because we knew we were going to have, you know, a big hit or whatever that looks like. But for me, it's always just planning ahead and knowing exactly why you're doing what you're doing. And when we get into the key performance indicator, the KPI side, that's where we're looking at what's the return on investment. Do we know what the result is of what we're doing with the finances? And is it getting us from point A to point B? Jessica, we do hear that phrase fractional CFO a lot. And I'm wondering if you can talk about what that means. How is that different than sort of traditional accounting service? And what does it look like for people that are working with you or your firm? Yeah, so the fractional CFO is really that high level. So when you have an accounting, a traditional accounting firm, and we're just doing accounting, which we do that too, we are focused on the past and we are focused on reporting on what happened. And we are focused on making sure that's accurate and that's really past focused. And, you know, we want to get you your time, your financial statements timely, but it's very transactional and historically based. When we step into the CFO role, that's very future faced and strategic. So we are planning strategically for the future of the firm and where you want to go and how you're going to get there. And what that looks like for us is we have a couple different options. One is more of the mastermind type group. So it's a group setting where we use our program to help guide people through the pieces of how we deliver the CFO services. And then the higher level package is the full fractional CFO, where we have quarterly strategy calls. We develop a five-year, we call it a profit and growth plan, and we set help the firm owner set the goals. And it, it's further than just, okay, my goal is $2 million this year. That's great. But what are the steps you're going to take each quarter to help you get there? So what are the actions we're going to take to help reach those financial goals? Tell me more about this mastermind approach. This is interesting. Yeah. So that's new. And we're actually just launching that in April. And we're really just focused on in this set, in this you know service or this product we're offering, it's the group approach. So I think one of the things we find a lot as entrepreneurs and business owners, because we are entrepreneurs, that's why we're doing this, is it gets very lonely and we could definitely benefit from sort of that hive mind approach. And within law firms, it's extremely specialized. So I think there's a benefit of being in maybe some small business groups, but within the law firm group, the law firm owners have very specific issues and there's a lot we can learn from each other. And As the leader of that group, I help with the financial piece, the some of the strategy and the accountability piece. And you know, my all of my clients are go-getters. So we have I have an awesome book of business of folks that are ready to just accomplish their goals and make magical things happen. And so within this group, I think there's going to be a lot of energy surrounding that positivity. It, within my CFO services, we do work on mindset. So one of the things I discovered in starting my own business personally was that process in itself really makes you face all of your issues, right? So your issues with money, with management, with people, all of those things, you just it's right in your face. And one of the ways I have found to deal with that most effectively is work on mindset And I have been able to help pass that on to the clients as well. I think that's so important. And at our summertime mastermind this year, the first person that went shared about how he insisted on signing every check and like he was doing all the bookkeeping and he was a law firm owner with like 20 employees. And so I think just giving people that space to have those conversations around money, because money's so weird. People get so emotional to money. I mean, it's I know it's how we assess value, but I think that's tremendous. I think you'll have a lot of success with that. And I think that if people see other people being vulnerable about how they talk about money, that'll just help a lot of people. Absolutely. And, 
you know, I think a lot of law firm owners, maybe they have the goals and they have the vision, but they're not sure how to get there. So in school, you guys didn't learn strategic planning, you know, you didn't learn all of that stuff. And so within the mastermind, we can all help each other. Of course, there's going to be people that are further along with the journey than others. And with my experience, you know, helping overlay all of it, I think it's going to be a super, super powerful group. This is excellent discussion, Jessica. I wish we could continue it on, but we do need to wrap things up because I would actually absolutely love to just talk numbers all day with you. But I want to remind everyone to go to the Facebook group, get involved there, join us there. If you want a more high level conversation, join us in the guild, go to maxlawguild.com. Remember to get your tickets to the conference, go to maxlawcon2022.com. And while you're listening to the rest of this episode, while you're hearing the tips and the hacks, please give us a five-star review. Jimmy, what's your hack of the week? I just finished reading a book called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. It's a good book. It's a good intro to the Stoics. I hear all these people talking about Marcus Aurelius and Seneca and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh man, those old geezers, what do they know about anything? But it's made it really accessible and it was a great intro. So I'm actually going to going to do a little bit more research on the Stoics. And and the book is very practical, even if you don't want to do any more research on the Stoics, but just sort of some of the things that come up, certainly for us as business owners, it was a really good book. Yeah, I've got that book. I think I recommend it. I I actually read it daily where it's a little thing from a Stoic and then you read it. It's just, it's a cool little thing. Sometimes I'll post it in the Guild, but it's it's actually pretty cool. So uh, I'm into some of that stuff. It's it's really interesting. But uh, Jessica... You're up next. Do you have a tip or a hack for us? Yeah, I think the little conversation we just had about mindset is probably the most critical piece to business owners accomplishing their goals is that mindset work. And mindset, Jim, you hit the nail on the head. Mindset surrounding money is all over the place, right? I think when we start digging into it, there's a lot of stuff that we learn growing up that has to do with money and is impacting the way we see money, the way we see money in our firm. And I think that work is going to help propel people, you know, really far towards reaching their goals with their law firms. Love it. Very good stuff. So my tip is, and I, I sometimes like, to me, things can be kind of basic when it comes to technology on my computer because I just I love it so much. But like for some people, I'm, I'm hoping this will help people. So if you've got a Mac and then you've got an iPad, you can actually use that iPad as a second screen. And I don't know, I don't think a lot of people know that. So the way you do that is you go to the top of your screen and there's a rectangular with a solid triangle at the bottom of it. And then you choose that device and you can actually add that as a second screen. And it's really, really handy whenever you're traveling or you're working from home. And so I don't think I've ever used it as a tip before, but it's really, really handy. I use it all the time. So um, I highly recommend doing that. It gives you that additional screen, which increases your productivity. That is my tip of the week. Jessica, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. I think that we need to be talking about numbers more often. I think that's something that's really helpful for law firms. So thanks so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Jessica. Have a great day. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. To stay in contact with your hosts and to access more content, go to MaximumLawyer.com. Have a great week and catch you next time.